All right, let's see how Ron Price sets the tone for play in your sandbox at home. Here's a quote. Rather than each spouse seeking their own gratification, he and she should focus more on how to meet their mate's needs and desires. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a marriage book called Play uh, Nice in Your Sandbox at Home. I have previously reviewed, I don't think I did a video on it, um, Play Nice in Your Sandbox, which I will link. Uh, there might be a video. It won't be me talking. It'll just be audio only. But anyway, I will link that up so that you can watch the other one or listen to the other one or read it, depending on what formats I have. Let's dig in. So Play Nice in Your Sandbox at Home starts around his acronym for Play Nice. Um, and it is P, play together. L, look for the good. A, admit when you're wrong. Y, yield. So like, you know, give up a little bit. Don't always have to win. Um, N, never threaten the long-term view. I, insist on win-win. A little bit of repeat there. Uh, C, commitment. E, emotional needs must not be underestimated. I'm not going to cover every point in every chapter. There's a little bit of overlap in here. But ultimately, I think it's I think it's a good book, right? When it comes to Ron Price's um, recommendations for like how you build a relationship, it goes past the, hey, just have a date night, which you hear all the time. It goes into, you know, you should have a date night, um, but, you know, maybe you should have two nights a week. One is for fun, say your date night in a week, and or it doesn't have to be date. You don't have to go out for a date. One is for fun together, play a game. Uh, and the second night is for um, being serious, like talking about what's going on in your relationship, what you're happy with, what you're unhappy with, and, and just how you feel. Like have a serious conversation with your spouse, with your partner about your relationship so that you can, you can just keep building it so you know what's happening in it. Um, I think I'd add to that stuff from One Extraordinary Marriage, uh, which is about sex, where they talk about uh, figuring out what your sex schedule is. So my sex schedule, <laughs> oh, just, just what you wanted to know is that, uh, I take Monday or I take Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and I pick one of those nights and we have sex and my wife picks, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and she gets one of those nights and she is she's kind of in charge of our intimacy that night. Now it doesn't mean we always are have sex, but we know we are intimate. We are physically intimate in some way that night. So whether it's, you know, cuddling with not much on or something like that. Um, we do that regardless of whether we can actually have sex or whether yeah, maybe you're sick and you don't want to, you just want to cuddle and maybe we'll cuddle and read next to each other, something like that. But we are specifically have physical intimacy, uh, twice a week. And most of the time that is sex, but not always. So I'd add that to it. Um, so I mean, at most, if you're doing like one night for talk, one night for play and it's two separate nights for sex, like you're having four nights a week on your marriage and, it doesn't seem like a lot to me, but I mean, realistically, you could do it in two nights. If your serious night and your other night are like, those are your sex nights too, that's fine. Um, but ultimately, like it says, talk about your marriage and, and invest in your marriage if you want it to grow. And a good adage is, you know, the grass is always greener where you water it, I think. <laughs> that's probably a better one than what you may hear most times. Another thing that Price says, which I want to cover, is that trying to change your spouse is a waste of your energy. Um, and, and really, he comes down to one sentence is, be the change you want to be in your marriage. So if you want more intimacy, then like, how are you going to change your marriage? So it's conducive to more intimacy. How are you going to, and guys are like, I'll just, you know, whip off my clothes. That's not how it works guys. Um, but like I heard another good quote. I don't remember her this, but sex starts in the kitchen because it starts with like, you know, you doing dishes and stuff. That's how it starts. Um, it starts with, you know, having a conversation with your wife. I know one extraordinary marriage has often said, I don't listen to the show anymore, the podcast, but I have listened to it. My wife still does. But as often said, like he, they'll both say like his wife needs to get her words out. Once her words are spent, then she's ready to be intimate. Um, so like, how can you contribute to your intimacy, uh, that way and make sure that you, you started earlier that you, uh, you are the change you want to be right. Fireproof. He cites the fireproof movie a few times in here with some Kirk Cameron movie, little cheesy, <laughs> man, maybe more than a little cheesy, but it's a good, like. Kirk Cameron's character and that has, you know, basically been the destruction of his marriage and he finally realizes it and he, his wife is like checked out. She's like, I'm done. I can't do this. And he takes the lead to build his marriage by taking the love there. I think it is. But basically he spends like six, 60 days, 30 days, like doing everything he can every day, doing a new challenge to you know show his wife that he loves her. And of course, cause it's a movie, they get back together. Uh, but I've also heard like, I've, know people who've done the love dare when they've had a tough time in the marriage and at the end of it they're like oh no we're like in an excellent spot and then it all started on one side the other side was not interested in it and was never told that anything was happening so that that's good i think that's a that's a good one 
Prez also talks about the dwindling levels of commitment. That's one of his, you know, words in his acronym. Uh, and basically, like, when we're not happy with something, when something doesn't work right, we just toss it out. And we can do that with marriage. And he does say, he doesn't say, like, never throw your marriage. He does say, like, sometimes there is a good reason for divorce. Uh, certainly, he doesn't say it like this, but I would say, you know, certainly abuse, uh, physical abuse, uh, heavy emotional abuse, stuff like that. Like, that's that's certainly a reason for divorce. But he says, like, we just... Hey, we're not. I'm not happy anymore. I'm not. I'm not in love right now, and and we just check out. I would say over my 16, is it 16 or 17 years, something like that, of marriage, 2003 to 2020, seven. We're coming into 17. Um, over my 17 years of marriage, almost that there have been times I would not say I have liked my wife, but I love her. Like I think of not having her around, and I go, oh, I would, like break my heart. And, and that happens. Like, we spent an entire year like that before we had children. We are like, I don't particularly like you right now. We are arguing regularly. Um, and we are not happy about the outcome of these discussions. These discussions. But, uh, yeah, it it can be tough. And, and the way you fix things is by putting the time in to fix them. That's how you fix things. You don't just throw them out. So commitment is a big thing for him. And probably the final point I'll highlight is that the price talks about these discussions, as I just talked about myself. And that these discussions, if you're having a circular argument, circular discussion regularly with your spouse, and you're just coming back to the same thing, we talked about this last week, and that's all, we haven't done anything, and we're still in the same spot. Well, that's probably because you didn't get to the heart of the issue. So you haven't got to, like, the real deep need that your spouse has, you're not addressing it still, you're just, it's just not there. So you need to do that. That's how you're going to resolve this problem long term. You're going to get to the heart of the issue by really digging in with them, by you know, digging in and finding that heart deep issue. And, you know, he has some other, some other good points about that, taking a turn being the listener, like this, you know, the conch shell from uh, Lord of the Flies, right? You're the, you're the speaker. So you get to be in charge uh, and the listener echoes back to you, repeats. So I hear your saying, that's it. They don't weigh in in any other way. And and when the person's finally like, absolutely, like, that's exactly what I'm saying, right? That's my heart. And then you work on a resolution for that together. And then maybe you switch who's a listener. And who's the who's the uh, who's a talker, but not before. Um, yeah, that's a, like that's a really really good model. I, I like that. I try to practice that. I don't always do good. I uh, also talks about like when you're talking about an issue, you talk about the issue. You don't like suddenly go, well, you didn't put the laundry away too. Like, well, that's not what we're talking about. Maybe that's an issue, but that's not the issue we're talking about now. So don't let your discussions along those lines get into you know all over the place. Keep them centered on the thing at hand, on the issue you both decided you talk about, and, and stick to that. Probably one of the other good things, uh, you know, going back to the date night thing, is he also recommends um, sticking with coming up with 10 index cards each with events on them. So some of them will be easy, like, hey, let's just go to get coffee. Some of them will be harder. Hey, let's go away for the weekend. And that you, when it's date night, you draw one of these cards. And, and you know, if it's away for the weekend, you necessarily don't do that. But, you know, you plan, okay, we're planning that for the next time. And maybe your date night is starting the plans for that. Um, and that way you both have, have an idea of what's happening. Um, and you both have, like, you both have contributed to what you want to do. Um, so maybe go to the movies is one and you look and say, well, let's go to the movies. Well, well there's nothing either of us want to watch. Like we don't, aren't, aren't interested in going to the movie. So we can file that one and pick another one. That's okay. Um, that was another good, another good idea I would like to do with my wife, uh, come up with like 10, 10 ideas each and, and do that. So that when it's date night, we know uh, what we're doing. So that's it. Ultimately, uh, playing in your sandbox at home is a good book. It is, if, you're, if your marriage is in trouble, if you're really struggling to, you know, for communication, for intimacy, for all that stuff, I think it's a good book to start. It's a fairly short read um, to start you down the, a, a path towards that. There are many other things. Uh, Five Love Languages goes way deeper on some of this. And Price recommends many other resources that go deeper into individual items on his list. But Play Nice in Your Sandbox at Home is a good starting point if you're struggling if you just need some help so that you can start getting your marriage back on a path towards health so that you can stay married. So yeah, I recommend that one. It's a good book. If you like the review, you give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the review, I actually don't want to hear about it. Oh, no, that's not true. You tell me why. I'd love to know why. What don't you like about the review? What topics should I cover? Or how should I approach them that you would get more out of them? Uh, if you loved it, you can subscribe, but don't hit the bell because you got better things to do than wait for notification. You should just go read a book or go hang out with your spouse or hang out with your kids or work or something else and schedule your YouTube time and, and watch me then. Have a good one.